Hello, welcome to Smart Sex, Smart Love. I'm Dr. Joe Cord, and today I'm going to be talking about watching pornography. And notice I'm not saying using pornography, because I do have a bias, and that is that pornography is not an addiction, nor is it a drug. So my clients will come in and say, I've used pornography, or my mate has used porn pornography. Um, you don't use pornography, you watch pornography. There was, there's a great um, porn actor named Miles Stryker, and he says, we're not making love, we're making movies. And whether you or believe in porn or you don't believe in porn, the truth is sex education today in our country is pornography. We either do not have sex education in schools or religious institutions, and if we do, it's very limited and very one-sided toward heterosexuality and toward being cisgender. And I think we need a conversation, whether we agree or disagree, about what porn is, what porn's not, is it good, is it bad, is it helpful, is it not? to talk about it from our points of views rather than policing everyone else around their points of views. Often it's it's turned on males because males tend to watch more porn, although this is changing. More women are watching pornography. And actually they're calling the pornography that women watch or, or they read, um, you know, like Twilight series or Shades of Grey. They're calling it literature. And so there's a, a, a better name for it, actually, maybe a more uh, palpable name for a lot of people. But the truth is, people are having private sex lives, they're reading erotica, they're watching pornography, and the problem is, we can't have these conversations because when we do, people's disgust response, people's discomfort, their moral beliefs, their religious beliefs, they take over. And there's a great quote from a colleague of mine, Doug Brown Harvey, and he says, when it comes to sex, the most uncomfortable person in the room has all the power. And the truth about that is, that is true. I see that in the talks that I do. When I bring up pornography and, the, and people who watch it, people say, well, what about human trafficking, which is horrible and needs to be addressed? What about child porn, which is horrible and needs to be addressed, of course. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about when I speak about porn is the low-hanging fruit, the things that most people are watching on their computers, on their phones, that need, need addressing. We need to talk to children about pornography because they're watching it whether you like it or not, and they need porn literacy. In other words, they need information about what they're watching, what's helpful, what's not helpful, what's right, what's wrong, based on your values as a parent, based on your religious beliefs in your household, based on on what might be helpful for them rather than shaming them, helping teach them what sex is and what healthy sex can look like, what unhealthy sex can, can look like, and consent, mutuality, and shared uh, interests, just to name a few. So I hope this starts a conversation for you, your child, your partner, your friends, your family, and uh, you can take the information and maybe discuss even on this um, video in the comment section. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.